Hi mga ka-coders and welcome to our YouTube channel, Learn ITEC. Sa mga hindi pa pala nakakakilala sa akin, ako nga pala si Renmark, isang software developer at isang IT faculty na nakabase sa Kapastarla. Samahan niyo ngayon upang tumuklas ng mga bagong kaalaman na related sa information technology. In this video, we will talk about Lesson 4, which is Ohm's Law. So let's get started. What is Ohm's Law? Ohm's Law is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance and how they relate to each other. Ohm's Law was developed by a German physicist named George Ohm who undertook many experiments to develop his theory including measuring current by touching electric circuits to see how much it hurt. The higher the current, the more it hurt. Okay? So si George Ohm, no, siya yung scientist or physicist na nag-aral dun sa relationship talaga between yung tatlong bagay na yan, yung voltage, yung current, at saka yung resistance. No? So, na siya yung nagpatunay na yung tatlong bagay na yan, hindi sila talaga pwedeng magkahiwa-hiwalay. Okay? And tama naman talaga siya. Ngayon, para mas maintindihan natin, meron tayong simpleng circuit dito. At gusto kong ipakita ko ng ibig sabihin nito. Ohm's law relationship between voltage, current, and resistance can be represented with this one. For example, I have here a 9 volts power source. No? Ito yung pinapakita ng ating multimeter. So ngayon, ang nangyayari, no? Kung 9 volts yung ating multimeter, pag pinadaan natin yan sa isang resistor na merong 10 ohms, so ilan na lang yung current na mare-receive o lalabas after niyang dumaan doon sa ating resistor. So, as measured, naging 0.9 amperes na lang yung naging resulta paglabas doon sa resistor. Bakit kaya? Explain natin ngayon. So, there are three formulas no, when it comes to Ohm's Law. Ito yung voltage is equals to current multiply by resistance kapag daw yung voltage ay missing, okay? At hawak mo yung current, then kailangan mo lang i-multiply yung current do sa resistance, makukuha mo yung voltage. Paano naman kung yung current yung nawawala? Yung voltage kailangan mo lang siyang i-divide do sa resistance at kung missing naman yung resistance, kailangan mo lang i-divide yung voltage dun sa Current. Pero tandaan nyo na hindi nyo naman kailangang i-memorize yung tatlong formula na yan. Kasi bibigyan ko kayo ng mas madaling teknik o forbidden jutsu para hindi nyo makalimutan yung mga formula na yan. Okay? So, ang kailangan lang nating tandaan is yung tinatawag nating Ohm's Triangle na ganito ang itsura. So, ito yung tinatawag nating Ohm's Triangle. So, yung triangle na to, ang kailangan nyo lang tandaan is yung VIR, okay? Parang BIR. No, hindi nyo makakalimutan ang BIR. Alam nyo naman kung gaano kabuhay yung mga BIR sa atin, no? Pupormahan nyo lang yung B na V and VIR. Ngayon, ang mangyari lang, kailangan mo lang isulat yung V do sa pinakataas ng triangle and then yung I, yung nandun sa left side at yung R yung nandito tas gagawa lang tayo ng partition between doon sa V, doon sa I at saka R. Ngayon, para hindi ka mahirapan, or actually sa math, alam nyo naman yan, no? Pag gumagawa tayo ng ganitong klase ng formula, yung magkatabi, that is multiplication, kaya naglagay ako ng multiplier dito, kapag naman nasa taas ka, ibig sabihin, ang operation na masusunod will be division. So, division yung nandito, and then multiplication yung nandun sa kabila. So, paano gumagana yung Ohm's Triangle? Madali lang. For example, if you want to find the voltage, kasi hindi natin alam yung voltage, then we can simply write V is equal dun sa, tatakpan lang natin yung V dun sa triangle, at may may iwang I at saka R dun. So, we will just going to write I times R, which means voltage is equals to current multiplied by resistance. 
you can write a little multiplication symbol. Tandaan nyo, kagaya nung sinabi ko, this is a triangle, kung kailangan nyo talaga, no? Pero, madalas, eto lang naman yon Voltage is equals to current times resistance. Eto yung magiging formula natin para mahanap yung voltage, okay? Meron akong bagay na gustong i-clarify, no? Siguro naman, napansin ninyo, bakit kaya yung current, no? Ang letter na ginamit ay I at hindi C. Nandun pa yan sa mga previous lesson at sabi ko, pinangako ko na ngayon ko yan ipapaliwanag, no? So, ang nangyari kaya ay at hindi C or kahit A, no? Pwede rin naman gamitin yung A para sana dun sa amperes, pero bakit ay talaga yung ginamit? Well, the unit of current is the amperes or amp, which was actually named after Andre Ampere. Si Andre Ampere, it's actually a French physicist naman this time. A couple of hundreds of years ago, no, he undertook lots of experiments and many involved varying amount of electrical current. So, he called this intensity du current. No? I don't know with the pronunciation if it's correct, but that is how it's written. No? Intensity du current, or ang ibig sabihin sa English is intensity of current. So, nung pinablish niya yung mga trabaho niya, no, they took the letter I and it became the standard up until today. So, kaya nga, I yung ginagamit nating symbol para dun sa current. Ngayon, may tendency din no, in the future na baka makita ninyo na instead of letter V, gumagamit sila ng letter E as a symbol for Voltage, kasi ang ibig sabihin ng E is electromotive force, which is pares pa rin doon sa purpose ng voltage. Huwag kayong magalala, no? valid din yun, pero most of the time, no, ang gagamitin pa rin natin dito is V. Inintroduce ko lang na baka makita nyo E, equivalent pa rin yan doon sa V, pero V ang gagamitin natin para dyan. Pero yung I, hindi siya magiging A, it's always I, okay? Now, paano naman kung yung current yung nawawala? Ganun pa rin, no? tatakpan lang natin yung I. Pagkatapos, isusulat natin, I will be equal to, since yung V yung nasa taas, i-divide lang natin dun sa nasa ilalim, which is R. So, ibig sabihin, current will be equal to voltage, then divide by resistance. Ganun lang kadali. Andali lang pala, sir. Yes! Paano naman kung hahanapin yung resistance? Tatakpan yung R. So, kung tinakpan mo yung R, yung V naman at saka yung I yung naka-expose. So, isusulat mo ngayon, R will be equal to sa voltage divided by the current. So, ganun yung magiging sisteo way para makompute natin yung current. Ngayon, gawa tayo na example kung talaga ba naintindihan yung mga pinagsasabi ko. No? So, meron ako simpleng electrical circuit dito na merong battery at merong resistor. No? Hindi natin alam kung ano yung voltage ng battery. Hindi siya sinabi. No? Pero meron akong resistor dito na 3 ohms. Okay? 3 ohms yung nakalagay kong resistor. At nung nag-connect tayo ng multimeter, no? doon sa circuit natin, nakakuha tayo ng reading ng 2 amperes. Okay? By the way, ang... Pagko-connect ng multimeter kapag ampere yung sinusukat mo, kailangan mo talagang pumasok doon sa circuit. Ang ibig sabihin, kailangan maging part yung multi-tester ng circuit. No? Sa mga medyo nakakaintindi na sa electricity, gets nila yung gusto ko sabihin. No? Pero darating tayo dyan, hopefully. No? Ngayon, gusto nating mahanap yung voltage pero dalawa lang yung bagay na meron tayo. Yung ating resistance at saka yung value ng ating current. Anong gagawin natin ngayon? No? Very simple, no? Kagaya nga, sa ginawa natin kanina, i-cover natin yung V. So, that will be equal to I times R. At ang I ay 2 amperes multiplied by 3 ohms. So, when you multiply 2 by 3, you're going to have, what's the answer? 6. So, ibig sabihin, 6 volts yung ating battery. Nakuha? Ang dali-dali naman yan, sir. Yes! Madali lang yan. Next, example, paano naman, no? Let's say, for example, meron tayo ditong lamp. Okay, lamp siya na nagsisilbing resistor. Yes, meron ganon. Na 3 ohms. Okay. At connected siya sa isang battery. At given naman yung volts ng battery, and that is 6 volts. Pero wala tayong multimeter at kailangan nating makita kung ilan yung current na dumadaan dun sa ating circuit. Okay. Anong gagawin natin? Siyempre, ganun pala niko, itatakpan natin yung I, pagkatapos, 
i-compute natin yan by dividing V dun sa R. So, makukuha ngayon natin depende dun sa kung ilan. So, ano ba? We have current is equals to voltage divide by R. 6 yung volts natin at 3 yung ohm. So, 6 divide by 3, ang makukuha natin dito is 2. So, ibig sabihin, 2 amperes yung ating, o 2 amperes yung dumadaang current pagkatapos nung valve. Okay? After the valve. No, not before. Okay? Next. Paano naman, no, kung this time, yung ating lamp, yung hindi natin alam kung, o yung resistive lamp natin, hindi natin alam kung ilan yung resistor, uh, resistance niya, no? yung resistor value. Ngayon, given naman yung ating volts at yung ating amperes. By the way, connected tayo sa 12 volts. Kaya 12 volts yan kasi naka-series kasi ako, no? Kasi sinabi series, although explain pa rin natin yan, yung negative dito, kinunek ko sa positive. So, parang ang bilang nito, isa lang. Pinag-add lang natin yung dalawang yan. So, 12 volts na power, okay? Tapos, meron tayong 0.5 amperes. So, ganun pa rin, tatakpan lang yung R. At ang formula is V over I, which is voltage divided by current. So, kapag dinivide mo yung 12 volts by 0.5 amperes, para mo na siyang sinabing multiply by 2 kasi pag dinivide mo to by 1 no makukuha mo dito is 12 itself pero pag dinivide mo yan by 0.5 by the way hindi siya multiplication no baka mo confuse kayo kasi iniisip niyo siguro 6 no yung mga bigla na kapag sagot diyan kukuha tayo ng calculator para hindi tayo malito iba division kasi yung operator no so when you divide that by 0.5 then definitely you're going to have 24 so, 24 yung hinaasahan nating value, ayan, nung ating resistive lamp. Okay? Next. Meron tayong mabilis ang activity, no? Kung to validate, kung talaga naintindihan ninyo yung lesson natin, no? Sasagutin nyo to habang nandyan kay sa screen, no? Dapat tamaan nyo to ng tama, no? Para, para naman malama ko kung naiintindihan nyo yung Ohm's Law. Kasi pag ito hindi nyo to naiintindihan, there's no point dun sa ginagawa kong fundamental, no? Isa, isa talaga to sa pinaka-importanting part o ng lesson natin, yung Ohm's Law. So hopefully, magets talaga ninyo, magamit ninyo to. Okay, first question. Ang missing natin dito, voltage. Sabi dito, in this circuit, we have a 3 ohms resistor. Ito yon connected to a battery with an unknown voltage. The current in the circuit is 2 amperes. So, 2 amperes yung current. Find the voltage using the Ohm's triangle. We find the formula. Binigay na nga. Dapat nga hindi binigay dito yung formula. Anyways, so binigay na yung formula. V, I, R. Tandaan nyo yun. Pagka wala yung formula dito, yung V, I, R lang, natakpan nyo yung V, yung I at saka yung R, i-multiply nyo. Ano? So, that would be 2 amperes times 3 ohms. Ang sagot dyan, pag hindi nyo ito na itama, bumalik kayo ng grade 2. Okay? Yes, that is 6 volts. Okay? Next. <laughs> Siguro grade 2. Nung natawa lang ako sa sarili ko. Grade 2 kasi dapat grade 2 nasasagot na yun. No? Next. In this current, uh, in this circuit rather, we have 3 ohms resistive lamp. Okay? 3 ohms daw. Ang current yung kailangan natin hanapin. Connected to a 6 volts battery. The current in the circuit is unknown. Find the current. Remember the V, I, R. Okay, ang unknown ay yung I. So, V divided by R. So, we have 6 volts divided by 3 ohms. 6 divided by 3. Again, pag hindi nyo ito nasagot, no? pwede na kayong bumalik ng grade 2. Ang sagot ay, syempre, 2. Ayan. Kaya doon din kayo babalik kung hindi nyo yan nasagot. Okay? Hopefully naman, nasagot niya lahat yan, no? Maraming salamat. Next, resistance. Paano, sir, kung hindi ko alam yung resistance, pero given yung volts at given yung amperes, very simple, no? Uh, kagaya kanina, pares lang ata to eh. Uh, wala yung, kasi same yung example dito. 12 yung volts, no? Kasi 6 plus 6, di-divide natin ng 0.5 amperes. So, kung naalala niya na lang yung sagot kanina, ang sagot kanina ay... 24 ohms. Okay? So, if meron pa kayong mga tanong at mga doubts, no, maghanap na lang kayo ng mga quick exam ng ohms law sa internet, try nyo sagutan yon. Kasi again, napaka-importante na dapat marunong kayo mag-compute ng tatlong bagay na yan. Kapag hindi nyo nagawa yan, no, 
kayo yung maihirapan in the future. So, pero tingin ko naman, kayang-kaya niya. Basta tandaan niyo yung Ohm's Triangle. Si V, I, at saka si R. Okay? At ito po yung link na ginamit ko para sa lesson natin ito. Maraming salamat po doon sa aking source. And that's the end of lesson 4. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll see you on our next lesson. If you love this video, kindly drop a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell icon if you want to get notified whenever I post a new lesson. Thank you very much and I'll see you on our next video.